Right, so in this demo I will show how we can use uh, Excel spreadsheets in, uh, in Epsilon. So I'll start by creating a new project. We just need a general project. No. First of all I will need an Excel spreadsheet and I have prepared one. So this spreadsheet um, contains a list of requirements for a hybrid SUV. We will work with the data in the requirement uh, worksheet down here. Um, you can see that it has four columns, ID, name, derived and text. Uh, and then um, uh, the first column holds the ID of the requirement, the second one holds a short description, the third one uh, holds um, values that show the dependencies of the requirement to other requirements. So here, for example, we can see that this requirement over here, lo or loss of fluid, um, is derived from requirement O triple one, which is uh, this one over here. So these essentially show uh, a link. And then we have the full text of the of the requirement. So how can we query such a spreadsheet using uh, using Epsilon? Uh, Epsilon has a dedicated driver for Excel spreadsheets, which uh, treats worksheets as types and then columns as properties. This means that we can create a new EOL file and let's call it series.eol and then we can simply iterate through all the requirements, all the rows in the requirement worksheet by writing for something like for r in requirement all say r.text.println and text means the value of the text column of this uh, of this row so let's run this in order to run an epsilon program uh, we need to create a new run configuration so double click on the new eol program um, entry here it creates a new run configuration and the EOL file that is active in our editor is pre-selected as the source of this execution. The next thing we need to do is we need to uh, we need to tell the configuration which Excel spreadsheet it needs to run this program against. So to do that, we need to select uh, first of all the type of model that we want to add because Epsilon supports a number of, of different types of, of models. So in this case, we want to work with a, uh, with a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So then the next step is to give our model a name, and then we need to select the actual spreadsheet we want to work with. And we need to read this spreadsheet, but if we, make, if we accidentally make any changes to it, uh, we don't want to save them when we are, when we are done. And here we can see uh, all the all the descriptions of uh, of these requirements. Um, now, uh, looking at the descriptions, some of them are empty. So, quite a few of them you will notice are empty, which is probably not a very good thing. Um, so, if uh, this spreadsheet was part of our engineering process, we would want to define some validation constraints. To make sure that all the requirements in this spreadsheet come with a proper description. So uh, what I'll do is I'll define uh, a constraint using Epsilon's validation language to demonstrate that spreadsheet can be used not only uh, for querying but also for model validation, model transformation, code generation and so on and so forth through the same, uh, the same driver, the same interface. So what I will create is a file called constraints.evl and then here I'm specifying that uh, 
in the context of the type requirement, so for all instances of requirement, there's a constraint called uh, fast title, right? And what we want to define is that the text of its requirement is defined. Okay? If this fails for a particular requirement, we want to get a message back saying uh, the text of requirement x is empty. Good. So now we can execute these constraints against the spreadsheet. In order to do that, we need to create another run configuration. This time, it needs to be an EVL uh, run configuration because we are, we are executing a set of constraints. But again, we need to go here and we need to add our spreadsheet to the configuration. So again, any name will do. Uh, fine, we don't want to see. So if we run, we can see a number of uh, a number of markers over here which indicate um, which constraints failed for which uh, rows in our spreadsheet. Right, okay, so going back to our spreadsheet, let's get rid of these, we don't need them anymore. Uh, going back to our spreadsheet, let's see how uh, we can manage references between, uh, between different rows. So as I said before, uh, the derived column actually contains references to the ID column, right? And uh, navigating references by string matching is not, is not really something that you want to do while you're navigating your spreadsheet. So uh, the, the spreadsheet driver, the Excel driver of Epsilon, provides a built-in way to define these, uh, these dependencies, to define these cross-references. And the way to do that is through a, a mapping file. A mapping file is a small XML file uh, that can define this kind of uh, this kind of dependencies. So let me create a new file and call it uh, mapping.xml and then put some content here. Right, so I've copied and pasted this uh, this content, but I will walk you through it. So what we define here, first of all, is that um, the derived column of the requirement worksheet is a multi-valued column, and its different values are separated using uh, commas, right? So uh, first of all, let's let's try to see what happens when we try to navigate derived without without this mapping file so let's call it r.derive.println right <clears throat> so because excel because the driver knows nothing uh, nothing more it just treats derived uh, in the way, in the same way it treats the text field. So just as a um, just as a textual value. But obviously we don't want that. So now let's see what happens if I just keep this part of the of the configuration. First of all, we need to associate this spreadsheet with. Uh, the with the mapping file, and to do that we need to go back to our uh, run configuration, edit the properties of our uh, spreadsheet, and point it to the mapping file here. Okay, so if we now run this, so we've already got now instead of uh, instead of the driver treating. Um, derived as a, a string, it treats it as a sequence of strings, right? So it has separated the values and now it has put them in, in, in sequences. But this is not good enough for what we, what we want to do. We also want to specify that this column is actually a reference 
and values from the derived um, column of the requirement worksheet actually point to uh, other rows which are identified by the uh, ID field of the requirement uh, worksheet. So now, if we run this again, now we don't, we no longer get uh, IDs, we get requirement rows. So this means that we can do something like um, for D in R dot derived, and now R dot derived will return in a sequence of uh, um, of requirement objects. So we can do D dot text and if we run this again, now here we'll get all the, the text of the derived requirements of the requirements we uh, iterated through in the first loop.